down and have a little breakfast. We got camp pretty well buttoned up. Freeze dried egg. Mmm. Anyway, I'm going to finish breakfast and uh, throw the canoe in. Hopefully, after yesterday's uh, bouncing off that rock, that big gouge I put in it, hopefully, isn't taking on any water. It didn't seem to be yesterday. I was watching it you know, for the last little bit when we were piling in. It seemed all right, but a little bit nervous nonetheless. Hasn't reached this part of the river yet. I think it's about 8:30 or so. Uh oh. Hang on. I've got a bead of water running down the length of the boat here. That gouge I put in it yesterday is seeping water in a little bit. It seems, I mean, it's not sprouting water or springing, it's not spraying through. It's more just slowly seeping in, but I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it. The boat bailed out. Happens, right? Kind of a piss off, but. Fault. Just trying to avoid portaging and didn't scout ahead far enough. It's the very thing I always say I should never do. Wet knees. Hey, <laughs> I've been wet before. Not gonna put a damper on this morning. Wow, absolutely gorgeous in here.
out there, buddy. Oh boy. Good dog, poop.
Just drifting down river here. There's an absolutely beautiful cliff. Massive rock face over there. Huge. Just catch a glimpse of it through the trees. River. You can see a huge big ridge line of rock there. And down that side. And the same over here. Hopefully the woodpecker's going at. A massive cliff there. Sure has some beautiful rocks. Rock features. sunshine. Enjoying the change in leaves. So gorgeous out. But good news is the boat doesn't seem to be taking on any more water. So I don't know if the material swelled a little bit and it's holding now. But there's you know a bit of dampness in here. But it's not filling up. I mean, if it was continuing to leak, I'd have water all around my feet right now. It seems to be holding, so here's hoping. We've got 
two, I believe. Yeah, upper and lower Goose Falls to Portage. And I think that's all the fast water that's left on this whole river. So that's why I've switched over to the double blade and just cruising along here. Enjoying another gorgeous day, singing songs and taking in the sunshine. campsite up at the top but way too early for that campsite here right at the brink of the falls dog jumping in the water right at the top of the waterfall. I guess he doesn't know any better. That is a big sand bank. I've noticed as we're getting lower and lower down the river that it's turned from rock into sand. continually eroding trees dropping down all kinds of trees falling down here
through a little bit of shallower water to get hung up in that tree. There's all these little flies out now. It's really warm. It's got to be mid-20s or so. We just carried around Lower Goose Falls. And um, carry on down river. It's, uh, there's been the two waterfalls in the last couple hours to break the monotony, but other than that, it's sandy, eroded banks and mostly flat water. You know, the odd little swift here and there, and apparently it gets even flatter from here on out. This is the part of the river that uh, I'm actually kind of the most apprehensive about, it, honestly. And just because uh, it's, it's kind of the least documented part. There's not a whole lot, I guess, to document about it, but it just, it winds back and forth. There's switchbacks and oxbows constantly. And Kevin Cowlin's guide said uh, that like him, he, when he camped down here, he didn't even know where he was. They just camped on a sandbar, which is fine. You know, if it comes to that. But the, I'm a little nervous about trying to find this portage. I don't want to end up going too far down river and there's not really any good indicators, you know, to use the map where you can prepare yourself for what's coming up. You know, you can anticipate a little bit. So, if I miss that portage, I could paddle right into Sturgeon Falls. But, anyways, I'm hoping that it's marked. Uh, I'm not that confident because most of these, I mean, that one around the falls there, obviously there's going to be a portage there, but there's one piece of flagging tape hanging on a tree. So, you know, I understand these are less maintained routes and. I just don't want to miss it, that's all. I'm hoping that there's a sign or some flag tape or something. You know, maybe somebody's put there. Um, but we'll see. I don't know if we'll get down. It's a three and a half carry, three and a half kilometer carry. And I have no intention of doing that tonight. But if we get close to it, or even I'd, I'd camp. It's apparently an abandoned homestead. Um, so I'd camp there if uh, if we make it that far. It's just after 12 now. Maybe 12.30 by now. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. What? Came around the corner, I guess, here rapids. Uh-oh, what's that? Turns out to be that. A tributary flowing in. Pretty steady. It's uh, I think around 4:30 or so now, maybe quarter to five. But I was able to. Uh, I've got actual topographic map. I don't know if you can see that in the sun. But uh, local topographical maps with contour lines and grid lines on it. So I was able to see this one feature huge big cliff and then find it on the map and then based on um, some twists and turns in the river that I was able to identify, figure out actually where I was finally. I've been going for a few hours and just kind of guessing. But I think I've got, um, if I'm where I think I am, uh, this little straight stretch here, uh, I've got 
about four kilometers, I think, maybe five, depending on the terrain and some of these elbows in the river. The river literally just does this in places. It's, it snakes right back on itself. It feels like it could almost you know, it'd be shorter to portage over if there wasn't so much brush in the way. Something to bury the monotony of this. Nothing too exciting was a coup. But the good part of that is, I believe that's marked on the map. Hap Wilson's tomogamy map, anyway. Yeah, I believe that marks the end of Sturgeon River Provincial Park. This part of the river, it's pretty monotonous, to be honest with you. There's since I left uh, Lower Goose Falls, there's been two or three small swifts. Um, nothing that was of any concern, but just buried it a little bit, but it's just been mile after mile of flat, twisting river. So Cooper's been racked out in the front of the boat, snoring away most of the afternoon. And I've been sitting back here paddling, singing songs, and entertaining myself. But I figure, I figure maybe another hour. I think this is it. There's that one piece of flagging tape right there. We're gonna go up there and take a look first. Okay, yeah, there's definitely footprints here. Well, it looks like the right spot, but everything's fitting together. It's supposed to go up to the old Kelly Farm homestead. raspberries. Okay, there's a trail going that way. And one going this way. Oh, man. You gotta be kidding me. Oh. If this is the three and a half kilometer portage, and it's this overgrown, Trail tape. I don't really need to be scouting all this tonight, but uh, we're gonna stay at the top of the hill back there. Well, it's opening up a little. My otter tooth um, map said this trail was long and it goes uphill. And, but it's like open and clear, follows a clear logging road or trail. Okay, come on bud, that's far enough for tonight.
Okay, I'm gonna go back and get camp set up and we'll decide what to do with these portages. Once we get some food into us and some, now I'm kind of get squared away. Well, we're gonna camp here tonight. It's really, uh, you can see it's, it's pretty small. There's not much, but figure something out. I'm not going any farther tonight. We'll figure out what we're gonna do after we get supper on. I gotta bring all our gear up that slope. So it's pretty steep. But gotta get after it. It's 5.30 now. So. Have a good day, buddy. Oh, I remember any bug spray or anything. I have to get the fire going. Mosquitoes out here. Oh. Don't often see mosquitoes at the last week of September. Just today's warm up weather really brought them out. They're black, they look like, I guess they're black flies. They're out pretty good right now. I'm having a field day with Cooper, so I got the fire built up pretty good. <sighs> Some of the wood's a bit damp, but it's hissing away and drying out there. I think I'm just gonna lay my bag out right here beside the canoe, tuck in close to the canoe, and uh, go without the tarp tonight. I think once it gets a little darker. These flies are already starting to let out. There's the odd mosquito around too, but um, I think once we get to dark, they're gonna disappear. Oh. Pretty much ready for bed. It's uh, almost 7.30. So, I'm going to sit here and keep an eye on my fire and just soak in the quiet. All right, Cooper, he's, he's racked out here beside me. But my plan is just to sleep right here in the open. Um, it's a fairly clear night. The moon's out but I've got my tarp right beside me and if it does start to rain, I can, uh, I'm gonna rig it over top of the canoe. Just simply tie down the back and I've got stakes for the front. And uh, Cooper and I'll just curl up underneath that. Hopefully it, it passes. 
see. We'll see how this portage goes tomorrow. I'm, I'm gonna play it by year whether I'm gonna push back to the truck or if, if this portage really does suck the life out of me tomorrow, <laughs> which based on the way it looks, it very might, very well maybe a, a tough slog to get through to the next leak. But again, I don't have to worry about that till the morning. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. It's just after seven and it's really clouded over in the night. We get packed up here. Hopefully it doesn't start raining. Hey buddy. Get everything packed up while we're still dry and then if it does rain, we're good to go. Time to get up. Wet socks. Gross. Pretty much got everything packed up. This is the warmest morning we've had. It's significantly like yesterday you could see your breath till nine o'clock. But leaves are drifting down everywhere around us. And it's time for some oatmeal with blueberries. Mm, hot. You got a mustache, too. I don't even think he knows it's there. Just after eight, we're all packed up, ready to go. Well, see how long this takes. Probably. Oh, interesting already. Kind of a trail through here. And it's overgrown. Oh, this is a tough slog. But you can tell this pile of rocks is man made. Part of the old homestead, clearing fields, I guess. Uh, look back here. If you look through there, not much of a trail, is there? And then occasionally, there's something like that. So, <clears throat> we're gonna take that and tie it up on this tree a little higher. It looks like the trail goes through there, but man, you could spend a week in here just clearing brush. There's so many down trees and it's so overgrown. It's a pretty rough trail. But if this was the wide open trail that the map suggested, saying this was the wide easy way, but it's longer, I can't imagine what the other way was like. Unless a lot more people are using it. Which could be the case. Maybe I'm the idiot. But look at those leaves behind me. Man. You stop and take a look around, it's still beautiful. Even though you're struggling. Alright. Onward. Yes, sweet, good boy Coop, good dog. Oh, I'm absolutely soaked. That took us uh, about an hour and a half across. We stopped for two short breaks. A trail is hell for the first thousand meters or so. It's just hard to follow, it's obscure. It not well cleared or marked. Um, so 
But after the first thousand, it's overgrown. There's lots of brush hanging over, you know, banging into the canoe and everything. But it's much easier to follow after the first thousand or so meters. But we're here. Get on the lake, get some water. There's a nice breeze blowing. I wanted to try and show how clear this lake is. On the shore, you can see every stick and rock on the bottom, 20 feet of water. And I put my GoPro in, and it just stops recording as soon as it goes in the water. And this has happened before. I really don't know why. As soon as it goes into the water, you get the audio, but no video. So, I have to try and figure that out once I get home. Oh well. I feel like we're going to come out of this bay and we're going to hit the wind. We've got to cross the width of this lake. The canoe's still holding up. It's, there's a little bit of water still seeping in through that gash, but hold them together okay. Anyone in the market for a nice place? Nice camp in the wilderness? A little fixer upper. Lake views. short portages will put us back on the tug of the sea. And hopefully we can find the pictographs on the tug of the sea. It's supposed to be the, the map says it's the second largest site for pictographs in Tomogamy. So hopefully we can find them. Find stuff like that. Sure, that's a bald eagle. Yeah, I just caught some white on his tail. That's quite the rig. It's a motorcycle tire. I guess two people can carry their gear wheel not across.
America, boy. Oh, I a good dog. Yes. Oh, just a good boy. I a good boy. That was the last of our poor dog. So we're sitting here. The sun's come out. It's beautiful. I'm just going to have a little bite of lunch wrap left so scarf that and a few strips of ready crisp yes come here come here sit 